This video is part of a series of presentations covering the key concepts of multi-threading and synchronization. This specific presentation begins with discussing the motivation for multi-threading and introduces the basic concepts pertaining to multi-threading. This presentation also covers some of the challenges in multi-threading programs, which are then discussed in further details in other parts of the presentation series. This presentation is part of a series of presentations. This part introduces the concepts of multi-threading and the very basics of synchronization. The rest of the series cover basic concepts of multi-threaded programming in C++ and measuring performance of multi-threaded programs using the user bin time Linux utility. Next, the series of presentations introduces threading without synchronization for solving data parallel programs. The next part of the series focuses on synchronization and user mutex with just one shared resource. And then the series introduces synchronization with multiple resources and also covers the use of the producer consumer model for multi threaded programming. Let's get started. Threads are essentially a unit of execution that is managed by the operating system. A serial or sequential process has only one thread, and this is called the main thread that runs the main method in a program. And keep in mind that programs have code, which is the program that is being running, some of the data and files associated with it. And the thread also has a stack, which is used for calling methods. Threads are lightweight processes or sub-processes. A multi-threaded program can have two or more threads in it, and threads are typically started and stopped by the program depending on its needs. Threads are sub-programs, and hence they share some of the code or the program or the instructions. They share the main memory or the virtual memory associated with the process, and they also share the file descriptors. So threads share the same program or same set of instructions. They share all of the data and memory, and they also share all of the different file descriptors or input output devices, including sockets, pipes, etc. Of course, each thread has its own non-shared resources. For example, the stack is not shared. That means each thread gets its own stack. This allows threads to call different methods to perform different operations as they need it. Now let's look at why threads were being introduced. Initially, when microprocessors were designed, there were increasing the speed of the microprocessors, which then introduced challenges in heat and how to fabricate these really fast uh, CPUs without causing thermal failure. So most modern processors now have many cores, and even smartphones and a lot of the embedded devices have multiple cores in them. And these cores run a little bit slower, but they all run in parallel thereby enabling the CPU to process more instructions in a given unit of time. For example, the modern desktop and server processors have more than 28 cores in them. So in other words, we can utilize 28 small CPUs simultaneously in order to solve complex problems. Many of the modern servers can have multiple CPUs, each CPU with multiple cores, where core is like a smaller CPU inside the larger CPU. In order to utilize these modern contemporary computers with multiple cores and multiple CPUs on a single machine, programs now need to be multi-threaded in order to take full advantage of these modern hardware architectures. Keep in mind, modern CPUs have many cores, where core is like a sub-CPU that can independently process instructions. So typically, instructions in a program are processed using a single thread. This is the main thread that runs, and these programs are called sequential programs, in which a thread starts running on a CPU core and starts processing instructions or tasks that are associated in a program in a serial manner. That means it executes one instruction at a time, just like we normally step through or visualize a program. 
So in this situation, given six instructions or six tasks, each task taking some amount of time, the total time for running this program will be 6n. Now consider in the, con the same program, but with multi-threading, here those instructions are subdivided or logically organized into independent subsets, and multiple threads are used to simultaneously process these instructions. So given t threads and some number of tasks, we can reduce the overall time for running these instructions or tasks proportional to the number of threads that we are using. This is the advantage of multi-threading. However, it is important to keep in mind that with multi-threading, we are not changing the asymptotic time complexity or big O of an algorithm. Instead, we are reducing the runtime constants in a program. So for example, if an algorithm takes five times O of n squared to run using a single thread, by using two threads, we are decreasing the runtime by 5 over 2, so we're decreasing the runtime constants, but not the time complexity of algorithms. There are several categories of applications that can take advantage of multi-threading. There are some applications or programs that are CPU bound. That means they spend most of the time in processing instructions using the ALU. Here, the program is essentially can be subdivided into independent threads, and these threads can simultaneously operate on multiple cores on a CPU and start generating outputs. This type of CPU-bound programs are widely used for scientific simulations, for simulation and analysis of complex systems. They are often used in AI and machine learning, where a large part of the time is spent processing instructions on a CPU or they can be used for accelerating different kinds of programs and algorithms. So typical applications of CPU-bound programs include scientific simulations for weather forecasting, medical and pharmaceutical analysis, um, artificial intelligence and machine learning programs, or just accelerating many complex algorithms. Another category of programs are called I.O. or input-output bound programs where they are most of the time or a substantial portion of the time is spent on processing data from different devices. Here, multiple threads can be operating independently on different hardware devices and interacting with them. And since we have multiple devices, they can asynchronously operate. And these input-output threads predominantly are context switch. And even with a single core with these multiple modern hardware devices, multi-threaded programs can provide uh, advantages and accelerate the overall operations of a program. And such applications are used for video streaming, where you have data coming over the network, and then you have your computer processing the video and audio separately or you can use it for gaming where there is a GPU or a video card that is able to process the video and provide interaction. So you have multiple hardware devices here. Or you can use it for online transaction processing where data is coming over the network and is being processed by database where it is more IO input output bound. So threading can be used either with CPU bound programs or with programs that are I.O. bound, where a lot of time is spent in I.O. Both types of applications can benefit from multi-threading. There are different classes of multi-threaded programs. The first one is called data parallel or synchronization free multi-threaded programs. These are programs that operate on independent resources or memory locations, and no two threads ever update or share any information between each other. The other category are multi-threaded programs that require synchronization. Here, threads may need to update or write some shared memory location, and care must be taken to synchronize or coordinate the threads. Let's look at data parallel applications in an example. Think of each thread as a car, and think of memory as a freeway with multiple lanes on which the cars can move. And in a data parallel or synchronization-free program, these cars move on independent lanes and never interact with each other. And therefore, since these threads use independent subset of resources or independent lanes, they do not need synchronization and they can run really fast. And this is some of the more common used model 
of data parallel programs for multi-threading. In programs that require synchronization, think of synchronization or shared resource as an intersection. So when multiple threads want to go through an intersection, if care is not taken, that means they are not synchronized, threads can simultaneously get into an intersection and your program will crash due to incorrect multi-threading. And this issue where threads step on each other due to incorrect multi-threading is called race condition. Race conditions are pretty common in multi-threaded programs and you can compare a lot of the race conditions similar to a race car situation where if multiple threads use a shared resource, they can cause uh, your program to crash and burn. So we do want to avoid this kind of race condition where threads crash and burn. So operating systems and, and software systems use what is known as a mutex, which is similar to a traffic light in order to coordinate threads. So when threads want to utilize a shared resource, they lock a mutex. And when the mutex is locked, they cannot enter the shared resource or shared region. And when the mutex is unlocked, they can go through the shared region and utilize resources. This ensures that threads don't step over each of the stores or have a race condition so that we can have a smoothly running multi-threaded program. The advantages of multi-threading obviously come with some challenges. So subdividing these problems to run as multiple threads can be challenging. And of course, we already saw race conditions where we need to coordinate or synchronize the threads in order to ensure that we do not have race conditions where threads crash and burn. So before multi-threading, first ensure you try to optimize and improve the performance of serial or sequential version. Uh, try to improve the algorithmic solution by using better algorithms and data structures. A lot of the standard C++ libraries like uh, and algorithms like Star, Sort, and Stutfine are already multi-threaded and you can enable a lot of this multi-threading with just flags to your compiler. So explore these standard approaches of improving the performance of your sequential version before getting into multi-threading. Modern operating systems support many threads in a process and these threads are typically created via a system call and programming languages provide different APIs for threading. In C++, the standard thread class is used for starting threads. And here, the stuthread um, class enables starting threads by calling methods. And here, it calls the method, but from a different thread. So when we create the object, this, the other thread starts running. And then we finally wait for the thread to finish by calling the join method. Uh, and of course, keep in mind, when we call the thread method, in this case, it's called do it, it can call other methods from it. Many threads, of course, can be created. So you can use a for loop to create a bunch of threads and add them to a vector. And then uh, you wait for the threads to finish. So this series of presentations, we first covered the basic introduction to threading and synchronization. Subsequent presentations will go into the details of multi-threading in C++ and measuring the performance of multi-threaded programs. Then we'll look at the threading without synchronization and other parts of the series will focus on synchronization with one resource, multiple resources, and then also look at the producer-consumer model for multi-threading. Hope you found this presentation useful and interesting. Make sure you check out the other presentations in this series.